Hello, I'm Admiral Sam Papara, Commander U.S. Pacific Fleet, speaking to you from the iconic headquarters of Admiral Chester Nimitz in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. As the Pacific Fleet Commander, I have two responsibilities. One is to man, train, and equip 60% of the U.S. Navy in support of the Chief of Naval Operations. In my other role, I'm responsible for the force generation, deployment, and operations of naval forces for Commander of United States Indo-Pacific Command. The United States is a Pacific nation. What happens in this region is of utmost importance to the safety and well-being of the American people, our partners, and our allies. The Pacific is vitally and principally important to U.S. deterrence here. In this area of responsibility of Indo-PACOM, U.S. Pacific Fleet stretches from the west coast of the United States to the India-Pakistan border, from the Arctic to Antarctica. It is the most consequential area in the world, and we are living in the most consequential times. The principles of the international rules-based order, sovereignty, human dignity, human rights, freedom of navigation, and the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea are being challenged every day. We recognize in the People's Republic of China an actor that would upend that order for the direct pursuit of its own interests in a top-down system based on a government that would compel human behavior in a way that's enabled in information technology. Within that mandate to upend the order comes our principle of integrated deterrence. Integrated deterrence is that outcome of a real and genuine capability to impose costs that is, the will, the capability, and the demonstration of that with the military instrument in a joint, all-domain, allied, and partner manner that also comports with the other instruments of national power, such as diplomatic, informational, and economic. We are challenged in our resiliency, in our space, and in our command and control systems, yet we see in commercial proliferation in low Earth orbit and mid-Earth orbit opportunities to make ourselves more resilient, more capable, and with a greater ability to assure how we see, understand, decide, and act within the battle space. We're looking at ways through space, cyber, and artificial intelligence to act through every single domain to dazzle, deceive, and if necessary, destroy those components that allow an adversary to exercise their decision superiority. For ourselves, we must have an immediate targetable picture of the space that we're operating in and the ability to bring to bear lethal, accurate, effective, long-range fires and effects against those forces and elements that are going to be, enable us to meet our objective. This, friends, is a call to action. Warfare is, at its essence, a human enterprise. The character warfare changes, that is, the technology, the techniques, and the procedures. But the nature never does. It's always human. Human decision-making is the goal of warfare, political decision-making. And there is an art element of it. The zenith of our research is to use science to advance the art of influencing human decision-making. So we're calling on all university-affiliated research centers and government partners to integrate our investments and our innovation to help build a force that's more effective in daily competition, but also underpinned by a lethal, effective, and timely force that's ready to credibly fight and win future efforts.